Hi everybody, it's Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am making a really cute cake that is inspired by a new game that came out about a month ago and it is already the most downloaded game on PlayStation Plus and that is Fall Guys. And today I will be making a really adorable jelly bean cake. So I've been playing this game a lot lately and I am really, really terrible at it. I'm not good at all, but I still love it so much. And my son, I want to tell you, he is amazing at this game. He's so good. He has already won four crowns. He is the best video game player I have ever known. And let me show you this really quick clip of him winning Fall Guys. I'm... The other person dies, I win. I win! Oh my gosh, I win! Yes! Okay, I am really proud of him for that. So tell me in the comments, how many games have you won in Fall Guys? How many crowns do you have? Zero, like me, or do you have a whole bunch like my son? All right, so I have so much work to get done on this cake, so let's get into my kitchen and get started on this jelly bean cake. Okay, so what I have here is an MDF board, and I covered that board with some blue fondant with Tylos powder mixed into it, and I let that dry out overnight, and then I also added some wooden feet to the bottom. I also drilled a hole in this board, which is not quite in the center, it's kind of a little off-center. This piece right here is a threaded rod. It is one I picked up at the hardware store, and I used my bolt cutters to cut it to about 15 inches. And then I am screwing on a nut and a washer, and I'm pushing that up through the hole that I drilled in my board. All right, so next I am adding another washer and then a nut, and you'll want to tighten that as much as you can using wrenches or pliers. For this cake, you will need three boards. These are slightly off because I made a few changes along the way, but you will need a seven inch and also two five inch round circles. And you can find the templates for these down in the description box. Just make sure that one of the five inch rounds is made out of MDF. All right, let's move on to the cake. The cakes I have baked are two eight inch rounds, four six inch rounds, and a half sphere. I am going to level the cakes like I always do by cutting the top off. So I am using my serrated knife and I am running that right along the top edge of my cake while also turning my turntable. And I'm doing the same thing to tort this. I'm just running my knife right through the center. All right, here are all of my cakes leveled and torted. And they look so beautiful, don't they? So I am just gonna take my eight inch, two of my eight inch layers, and then I am going to trim them down just a tad. So I am going to place a seven inch round cake pan on top of my cake to use as a guide for cutting. And next, let's fill and stack my seven inch cakes. So I'm placing the cake on my seven inch board and I begin filling it with my American buttercream frosting. And then I continue stacking up my other seven inch and then I put the two eight inches right on top of that with filling in the middle, of course. All right, next up I'm going to give it a crumb coat. So I'm just adding a layer of buttercream frosting. It does not have to be perfect here. Just use an offset spatula to spread out that frosting and be sure to pick up all the little crumbs. To smooth the cake, I cut a piece of plastic that would fit right in the gap on the bottom of the cake and I am running it along the sides of my cake. It actually worked out perfectly. And once I had it somewhat smooth, I popped it into the refrigerator to chill. And once the buttercream frosting was completely cold, I then repeated the process of adding more frosting and then smoothing it out once again. All right, here it is all nice and smooth and I am going to begin covering this in modeling chocolate. So I've rolled out a piece of yellow modeling chocolate and I placed it on top of my cake and I am smoothing it out with my fondant smoothers. And then I am using a razor blade just to kind of roughly cut some of that edge off. And once I have it trimmed down, I go back and I perfect it by holding my blade right up against the cake and I trim it off. Next, I'm going to cover the sides in modeling chocolate. So I have cut a strip of the chocolate that will fit right inside that gap and I'm unrolling it onto the cake. And then I am using my craft knife to go back and clean up the edges. And then I'm unrolling another strip of modeling chocolate onto the top of the cake and then I'm trimming that because I made it a little bit too big and then I am smoothing it out with my plastic smoother. 
Okay, let's move back over to my structure. I am next covering about four or five inches of my threaded rod on the bottom, and I'm also covering up all those metal pieces. This is when I noticed I had a mistake on the bottom of this board. So I flipped the cake over so that I could cut a larger hole in the board because I wanted it to fit over the nut so it would sit flat on the board. I did update the templates to reflect this change, so if you make this cake, there's no need to worry about fixing this. Before I can move the cake over onto my structure, I am covering it with plastic wrap so my cake doesn't touch it. And then I am just wrapping this around really tight, and then I'm cutting it down because it was a little bit too big, and there we go. Next, I'm very gently pushing my cake down the rod, and once I have it down onto the board, I am cleaning it up and then removing that plastic wrap. Next, I'm adding another inch and a half of aluminum foil tape, and this is where the jelly beans feet are going to go. And then I'm adding a sheet of parchment paper to protect the cake. To hold up the next board, I am adding another nut and washer. And here's my board, and then I'm also covering that in aluminum foil tape, and then I'm pushing it down onto the threaded rod, and then I'm adding another nut and washer. And again, you'll need to tighten that as much as you can. And this is going to hold up the entire jelly bean cake, so please be sure to get that nice and tight. And then I went ahead and covered the entire threaded rod all the way up to the top. Okay, let's stack some more cake and frosting. This time I'm stacking up my six inch cakes. I am layering up four cake layers with more frosting between each layer. Now that I have four layers of cake, I need to add dowels for support. So I'm adding four milkshake straws and I cut them down flush with the cake. And here's my final board and I'm pushing that down onto my threaded rod. I decided at this point to have the arms stick out from the sides, so I needed to remove the foil tape on the top section, and I made a loop in a piece of armature wire, and then I slid that wire down the threaded rod, and then I secured it into place with another nut. And then I went ahead and covered that with aluminum foil tape. Just FYI, it is very difficult to remove the arms to cut the cake underneath it. It is just something to note. So the main eating cakes on this one are going to be the yellow podium and the top of the jelly bean. Next I am stacking up four more layers of cake with frosting in between each layer. And then I am adding the half sphere right on the top. Next up is the carving, and this is when you need to get your template back out, and you need to hold that right up to the cake, and then just trim a little bit off. Um, mainly, I'm just trimming right around this midsection area. And I also decided to take just a tad off of the top. Okay, so this is the front of the face, and I felt like that needed to be flattened out. Okay, now that I have a nice shape of the jelly bean, I'm gonna cover it completely in white chocolate ganache. This ganache is just two ingredients. It is white chocolate and heavy cream, and I actually made three batches of it to cover this cake. And once I have a complete coat of the white chocolate ganache, I go over it one more time with another coat, and I try to get that as smooth as I can. To smooth it, I am first using a hot spatula, and then I also use my plastic smoother again. Okay, so this is about as smooth as it's going to get. And next I'm going to add a piece of white fondant right where the face is. And then I'm going to smooth that out and then cut away the extra. I really just wanna cover right where that face is. The jelly bean is rounded on the bottom, so I am next adding modeling chocolate to fill in this area. You could also use Rice Krispie treats to fill this in so you don't waste any of your good modeling chocolate. Let's get this jelly bean covered. First, I'm spraying the cake with water, and then I'm going to cover the cake in two pieces of modeling chocolate. So I first place a sheet of modeling chocolate onto the back of the cake, and then I cut it in a straight line down each of the sides. And then I cover the front in modeling chocolate too, and I blend those seams in the best that I can with my gloved hands and my smoothers. 
The Jelly Beans vase is up next, and in order to get it perfect, I cut out just the face part of my template, and I hold that up to my cake, and then I am cutting away that modeling chocolate in the circle. But let's move on to the arms. So the arms are completely made out of modeling chocolate, and I am just molding those into the shape with my hands. For the hands, I have rolled a ball of modeling chocolate and I just stuck that onto the end of the arm and I am molding it into the shape of the hand. And using my tools and hands, I am creating the fingers. And this tool right here is called a Dresden tool. It's one of my absolute favorite tools. I use it all the time and I, that is helping me to create the fingers. And next I'm adding the thumb and I am just blending that in. Next up are the feet and I have already modeled this first foot and I'm pushing it right onto that metal rod and that will help conceal that metal rod. The second foot goes into place. It doesn't really need any support here. Just stick it on there and blend it in. In this game, you can dress your jelly bean in so many different ways, um, but I decided to keep it simple with my jelly bean and just give him the underwear, I guess it is. It's like underwear with hearts on it. I thought that would be cute. So I am just making this out of fondant and I wrapped that around and I'm just sort of tucking this fondant under and then I am going to go ahead and add some cute little hearts to it. Next, I'm sticking the eyes on a shortening so that I can easily move them around if I need to. When your jelly bean wins the game, they stand on a podium just like this one and it looks to be scratched up, so that's what I'm doing. I'm scratching it up and then I'm also shading it around the edges with a darker shade of yellow dust. My jelly bean needs a crown. I suggest making the crown out of gum paste if you have it. You can also make it out of a modeling chocolate if you prefer that. So this one that I'm making right now, I made it out of fondant with Tylos powder added to it and it ended up breaking. So I had to remake it out of modeling chocolate because that is all I had. But the modeling chocolate one did hold up. All right, so I've cut out a strip here and I'm using a diamond cutter to just cut out some little triangles. If you have a triangle cutter, that would be great too. So just cut that out, and then I am picking up this entire strip and I'm wrapping it around a, a plastic tube that I have. And then trim it and glue the edges together and then let that sit out overnight. Next, I'm giving my crown two coats of gold paint and the paint I'm using is made by Sweet Sticks. All right, to finish off my crown, I'm adding some details with a darker shade of gold and so I'm painting a line along the bottom and then I'm adding just some lines right along the top edge of the crown. While the crown is drying, I'm decorating my board with fondant, jelly beans, and polka dots. I also added some stars and confetti sprinkles. And I'm finishing off my board with two pretty ribbons. I wanted to make my jelly bean shiny, so I made a glaze out of equal parts corn syrup and vodka, and I'm lightly brushing it onto the cake. You do have to be really careful with this because it can bead up on you. To finish this cake, I am moving my crown over onto the cake. It just kind of stuck on there by itself because of the glaze, but just to be safe, I stuck two toothpicks into the jelly bean to help keep the crown into place. All right, my Fall Guys cake is complete. I really love the bright colors of this one and I think it looks just like the characters from the game. All right, let's cut into this cake. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have learned how to make your own Fall Guys jelly bean cake. And I will be back next week with another baking project. Bye everybody.